OK, so we know that if we have a changing magnetic field, it generates a curly electric field around it. Now, can we write down an equation for this? Well, let's try. Let's say we have a curly electric field. The best way to measure that would be a line integral around a loop. So let's say we pick a loop and we go around it and do the line integral around it of the electric field. So that would be a complete integral of the electric field dot dl, where all the line elements. And that's a measure of how much curly electric field there's going to be. Okay. Now that depends on the rate of change of the magnetic field probably going through inside the loop. So what we need to do is measure the flux of magnetic field through the loop, which is written as the Greek letter phi. It's a magnetic flux. So what we have is the line integral of the electric field, which is a measure of how much curly electric field there is, is equal to the rate of change of this magnetic flux through that loop. And how do you work out the total magnetic flux? Well, you could have a strong magnetic field in a small region, which would be the uh, uh, like a solenoid, or a weak magnetic field over the whole region, but they give you the same magnetic flux, so the flux is just a surface integral. So the flux is just a surface integral over an imaginary bubble film over the middle of the loop of the magnetic field through the loop, which is the magnetic field dot normal vector dA, like all the surface integrals. So if you put these together, what we find is that the line integral of the electric field around the loop, which is the measure of the curliness, is equal to, this year minus, I'll explain why in a moment, the rate of change of the surface integral of the magnetic field over a magnetic field flux going through the loop. So you've just got to imagine, as normal for these surface integrals, some sort of bubble filling the loop, and that's the surface, and work out how many magnetic field lines go through that. That gives you the magnetic flux. Find the rate of change of it. And that will tell you, the minus sign, the line integral of electric fields around. The minus sign is there to get the direction right. We can use the right-hand rule as long as it's minus the rate of change of this, as we talked about in the last video. So this is now the complete version of the third of Maxwell's equations and is called Faraday's Law.